When you think of summer, you probably think of sunny beaches, sleeping in until 12 p.m. and not having any homework so you can do whatever the heck you want all day. But unfortunately, we're STEM Olympiad doers and we have better things to do during summer. Hello everybody, I'm Karar and today we're going to be talking about what you should do in the summer if you're interested in STEM. I know the summer is a really, 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 really long time away, longer than we'd all like to think it is, but after coming up, there are a ton of programs out there, but if you want to choose between them and have a wide variety, you gotta start thinking about what you're gonna do right now. So anyways, we know we had to get into summer programs, right? So let's talk. So when we talk about summer programs, the first, first option is math and science camps. So basically, they're literally just classes, but during summer, generally these aren't gonna be like necessarily college classes, but they're gonna be like high school level introductory to other fields. So examples of this would be Awesome Math and Cosmos. Awesome Math is a super good math program, Cosmos is a super good science program. Awesome Math is super epic if you're in middle school because it's like not entirely hard to get into, but at the same time, it teaches you a ton. Like I personally did Awesome Math in seventh and eighth grade and I improved so much, it was not even funny. Like literally from seventh to eighth grade, my AMC age score went up from 16 to like 23, yeah, 23. Bro, I literally even learned how to spin my pencil in awesome math. You know, like, watch this. Bro, okay. I, I swear I could do it, okay? I swear. Watch this. Bro, that home. Oh. Okay, one more time. One more time. Oh. Now that's pretty epic, not gonna lie. And, and, like, really, I attribute most of that to awesome math. So the really good thing about these math and science programs is that while they're not like super in-depth and they don't teach you some super specific skills, they give you a ton of really good background. In addition, they also open up new doors to the future, like they give you a lot of more standing in research programs and harder math programs, all that good stuff. Alright, so these programs are good for the beginning, right? When you don't have much on your resume and you're just trying to get some background. But second option is research program. If you're really interested in like science, not necessarily math, math is like less of a research kind of thing, but if you're super interested in science, research programs are extremely good because they show that not only you're interested in science, right, but also gives you a lot of specific skills and it gives you an idea of what the industry exactly is like. Research is like literally things that professors in the fields do. So if you do a research program, you're literally doing this high level, extremely cool stuff. Examples of these kind of programs are UMass Research Internships, which I did, and SSTP, Iowa SSTP, which is like another cool research program that matches you with a professor. So basically what these research programs are, are six to eight weeks of working on a research project along with the mentor, which is generally a professor at the university. Generally at the end, you get to make a poster and display all your findings, and generally a lot of people say they have really good experiences with this. Also, it looks really good on your resume, and I don't know, some people like it. Personally, as you can probably tell I was hinting at it, did not have a really good experience. So basically in the summer after freshman year, I go to the UMass Research Intensive, right? And I basically signed up for this fruit fly cancer research kind of thing. So the first week was kind of cool, right? We learned about how to use fruit flies in research. We learned about RNAi, which is a super cool technique. We learned about flow cytometry. We learned about gel electrophoresis, centrifugation, a bunch of cool research techniques. But then in the next few weeks, we basically just dissect flies every single day. Although we were able to like make a hypothesis and test it by cutting open flies and feeding them drugs and all that good stuff, like who wouldn't want to spend their summer cutting flies heads off? Like actually. But honestly, like it's more mechanical work, it's a lot more tedious than just like the camp itself, and honestly, I didn't get anything out of it. Another downside to research programs is it's super super expensive, like extremely expensive, like crazily expensive, like $10,000 expensive. That's like more than any other type of program you're gonna do. So generally, if you're doing research, you should be sure that you like that kind of thing. And I, I, I know a lot of people that really like this thing. I know I have a friend that like did research every single year for the past three years. And honestly, I'm fine with that, right? But personally, that's not just, it's just not for me. So if you're like me and you don't wanna do research, what could you do? What in the world can you do, Karara? And the answer to that question is college classes. What's really nice about college classes is that it shows that you can handle the rigor of a college curriculum, right? And colleges wanna see that. They wanna see that if they accept you into their college, you're gonna be able to handle the material that they teach you. Not only that, a lot of these courses have a lot of options. Like, you can take any course the university offers, and you know that university offers a lot of courses. So you could take like biology, you could take organic chemistry, you could take physics, you could take CS courses, you could take law, you could take anything. And it teaches you applicable career skills. Like, research doesn't necessarily teach you things that you're gonna be going into the future, but it gives you like good skills. This teaches you exactly what you wanna do. So, 
Generally, most of your local universities will offer this. Like in my community, like Berkeley, UC Berkeley and Stanford offer summer sessions. What's really cool about these summer programs is that they don't even have an application. All you have to do is turn in a high school transcript that shows that you have good grades and then they'll accept you in and you could take college class. So what I did last year is I took CS61A, CS61B, and CS61C at Berkeley, which are all the intro level CS courses. And honestly, they were all super useful. They all taught me how to code in like Python, like they taught me how to code in Scheme. Okay, that was not very useful, but they taught me a ton of stuff. CS61B, for example, taught me about algorithms, and that's literally like my favorite thing. Like, I love algorithms if you can't tell. Algorithms are my life. They are my only love in this world. And cloud classes aren't that expensive, right? Like, I took three courses, and that only cost $7,000, which is less than most research programs. Most people just take two classes, and that's just gonna be like $5,000, which is extremely, extremely cheap, considering that these are eight-week classes, and they give you college credit. All right, maybe, maybe not the kind of college guy who wants to go to college early and waste his time getting accelerated, getting college credit, all that nonsense. We wanna do something that I find interesting, huh? Well then, you can do independent internships. Now these are extremely epic because they don't cost anything. In fact, you can earn money. It's like literally costing negative amounts of dollars. Not only do these kind of things have more choice, they also have more prestige, right? It's just more impressive to have an internship because that shows that you went out of your way to contact people to get an internship. Like I know this guy who literally went to work at some company and he designed neural networks for an actual company and he got paid for it. And he's literally in high school. So for example, if you're interested in CS, internships are super good because there's not really many like CS camps out there. So if you want to do something CS related during summer, your options are basically limited to college courses or internships. The only problem with CS internships is that they're really hard to get unless you have a family connection. However, in science you could do independent internships with professors. So basically all you gotta do is you gotta email a professor, tell them why you're interested in their work, and then they'll respond to you saying whether or not they'll accept you into their lab. Now generally professors are not very willing to take high school students, so you gotta email like approximately like 50 to get like two positive responses. So it's kind of a lot of work, but generally a lot of people find it worth it. And if you do independent research, you could also use this to apply for science fairs later on in the year. So it's pretty cool. And lastly, if you don't like any of those other four options I gave you, come on, man, I gave you four whole options, but if you don't like any of them, then you could just do nothing. All right, okay, fine. Not absolutely nothing, but you could not take a program. You, you don't need a program to do stuff. If you're disciplined enough and you could do stuff on your own, then all you gotta do is make a goal list and finish it during the summer. Because summer is literally the best time to be productive. You have no school to worry about, right? You have no extracurriculars to worry about. So all you gotta do is focus on your goals, right? And even if you don't have that many goals during the summer, it's just a good time to relax so that when the school year comes, you can just grind and actually like have some time to relax. Alrighty, that's all I gotta say. Hopefully that got you thinking because you gotta be thinking, okay, apps are coming up. Like, I'm, I know I'm not the authority on this kind of thing, but I think I've had like enough experiences that I know what works and what doesn't. So just to sum up like what I've personally done, in seventh grade, I go to awesome math, learned a ton of math. Then go in eighth grade, I went to Proven Math Academy, which taught me a lot of proof-based math. Then I go to awesome math as well. And then in ninth grade, I try out research, find that it's not for me. And that's why I don't apply to research program in 10th grade when I actually went to like Berkeley classes. So let me know if you want any specific videos on like any of these summer programs because there's a lot of summer programs that I know about. I've been doing like science club and that kind of thing and I, I've, I've heard a lot of people have their experiences. So if you want me to make specific videos on specific types of programs, just let me know down in the comments. Other than that, that's all I got to say. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys again for watching and see you guys next time.